What's up, YouTube? Ben91 here with uh, Review One Piece, Chapter 858. Alright, so, she sh who shall not be named. I swear they just did some freaking Harry Potter shit in One Piece. But we'll get to that later. So, we open up with the cover page of... Usopp and Brooke playing uh, some ring game, like ring toss, and that was, that was pretty cool. Then, bam, when we get right into the chapter, it's the plan, the assassination plan of Big Mom. And, of course, we got Caesar the Clown just, well... Now he's Gastino, he wants to be called. But he's up to his own silly, evil ways. So, their plan is to bomb Big Mom with a gas. And they only have five seconds. A five second window. And then, in between that, they only have like a three second window before... People will react and actually be on them. So then uh, Capone, Beige Capone, goes into telling Luffy how he's basically going to have to be the divergent, uh, the ultimate divergent of all divergents and be the ultimate decoy. And of course, Luffy is completely okay with this. It's kind of Luffy shtick. He don't mind being the decoy. He likes the attention. And he's already planning a funny entrance, he says. I can't wait to see that. Now, one thing I did kind of notice is even though Beige said at the end when they finally assassinate Mom and they are escaping Whole Cake Island and Talkland that it's every man for himself but i kind of the way it's staying true to what we all thought beige's character was going to kind of be like but at the same time i'm sensing like a hint of respect from him towards luffy which is awesome and if not i could be crazy i do think the plan is not going to go off as well as they think. I think Brule is, in fact, going to signal Big Mom somehow. Uh, I'm sure she'll find some way of sending, like, a message through a mirror or something. You know, her powers are kind of crazy like that. So then we go into Big Mom... And her freaking out because her dummy Brooke isn't m moving. She's all sad, but then they remind her of cake. And she's all like, yes, today is a glorious day. Man, this chick is crazy. And man, from what Beige and them were talking about, there was only one time that she got hurt. And it had to deal with this picture of what they call... Mama Carmel or Mother Carmel and that she left some time ago so what I'm kind of theorizing here and what I'm saying is I think that's Big Mom I think when they talk about Mother Carmel they're talking about Big Mom and why I think that is because she who now who shall not be named, she who sh shall, ah, uh, man, that's such a tongue twister, she who shall not be named, the insane big bitch as King of Lightning likes to refer to her, the Red Queen off with her head like I like to refer to her, is damn near indestructible from what they said in that she only got hurt when that picture got hurt, and I think they're going kind of similar along the lines of the Horcrux, idea in Harry Potter how he split his soul so she has the soul soul fruit and she can split her soul and take other people's souls and put them in things and make her uh, 
little buddies or whatever they're called they're her homies there we go call her make her little homies then i think that's that's part of it in that she is mother caramel in that when she first got her soul soul fruit she attached it to that and that was the first instance of her immortality and now her body's indestructible and that's how she's been a yonko for so long Anyway, so then we close it out with back to the plan and them figuring out what the sh signal should be. And Sanjay plainly puts it that she and Pudding are already planning that the signal of the assassination of his entire family is going to be when she shoots Sanji right as they're going to kiss. She's not even going to kiss him. So they couldn't do like what Bay said in that the signal was going to be at the first kiss. And Sanji just plainly put it, let the shot be the signal. He'll move out of the way, he'll dodge it, and that will be their chance to put everything in action. Now, like I said, I think it's going to go off a little bit differently. I'm probably the only one still on the pudding bandwagon just because she was Sanji's chick. She was perfect for Sanji. Everything he really wanted and needed in a woman for him in One Piece. And I know Oda has specifically said One Piece is not a romance, but every great anime does a bit of fan service bleach was basically the same way and they still add a little of romance into it naruto had really not much romance into it and they took that and made it a full romantic thing so saying there won't be matchups in one piece is a bit of a stretch we're going to see it. We might all be disappointed. Some of us will like it. But we're going to get to see some matchups. I'm kind of hoping for a Luffy X Nami. And my fan theory on that will be up later tonight. So let's get back into this. They decide on that. Then we go to Pudding. Or no, the Vin Smokes first. We go to the Vin Smokes. And... They're all getting ready, and they're kind of wondering what's taking Reiju so long, and they find out she ain't in her room. She's already ready. Now, I do believe Reiju is going to pull an uh, ultimate big sister role. She's going to save Sanji. I know she says she wants the Vin Smokes all to die, but I think in the end, the only one... Vince Smokes, I can possibly see dying is maybe Judge, and I even doubt that one because the way I see this whole arc going is Sanji is going to mend his relationship with his father. We're going to find out that Judge Vince Smoke is just like Sanji, and that's why he uses tech instead of superhuman abilities that his kids have. To do it now, I understand that the Germa are very technologically advanced. You know, they do the whole cloning thing, but they do genetic manipulation and enhancement as well. And which Vin Smoke Judge has shown he has no, not really, li he has limited super capabilities. So I think we're going to see a development and that's why he pushed Sanji and hated Sanji so much is because he saw everything he hated in himself, in his son, and he's going to find out that his son is actually legit and it's probably the strongest of his kids. I know he got his ass handed to him by his two older brothers, but that was plot and he wasn't trying to cause any waves. He, Zeph's being held over his head, his crew's being held over his head, everyone he cares about, like, really cares about, is in jeopardy of being off. Okay, then we go to Pudding. 
Now, I found this very interesting because we always wondered through the beginning of Whole Cake Island why everyone was, had these lies. Like, w w was Big Mom a liar because, like, Jim Bay, they were calling him a clown because he got cold feet. But we're obviously seeing he really didn't get cold feet. We still don't know what he gave up in the roulette, if he gave up anything, and just, like, kind of ran away. But Pudding's ability, this is why Whole Cake Island is such a perfect place. She is rewriting everybody's memories to suit her mother's ambitions and her sick, demented will in following what big mom says she so indeed we're probably we're pretty much getting confirmation that big mom is indeed a liar and that all these most of these stories are slightly embellished though we can give credit to probably the whole zeus and poseidon or uh zeus and prometheus sorry about that thing where you know they took out an island of with lightning and this because Big Mom is insanely overpowered. Why we never considered her up to this point a top tier Yonko, I do not know. We always consider her the weakest with this. Well, she still is kind of the weakest. I mean, Shanks by far is probably still the strongest considering he is a Yonko and he has a limited crew and he doesn't have devil fruit power that we are aware of yet so that just speaks volumes to how op shanks is now kaido kaido i think is honestly the weakest yonko and i'll tell you why just because you can't die doesn't make you the strongest we're seeing that big mom in a certain aspect well not 100 percent confirmed but she's pretty much immortal similar to the guy in a uh, league of extraordinary gentlemen that he never died every time he got cut and it was ash would fall instead of blood it would heal right up and that was because he had a portrait of him that his soul was linked to and as long as that portrait stayed intact he stayed intact and i think that's where they're going with big mom and that's why this picture of her old self is such in my opinion it's her old self is such a dynamic thing and it's such an important role in this plot of her assassination because other than that like Bay said she is indestructible they have never seen her bleed they even were surprised she bled red blood when she did bust her knee after that picture was damaged. Now, what I'm also seeing too is Pudding is kind of seemingly getting tired of this because she's like, I have to overwrite so many memories. What if she just decides to be like, fuck it, I'm done, mama, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore she has a great character development and then sanji gets his chick back wishful thinking wishful hoping wishful dreaming whatever then at the end of the chapter we got the beginnings of the wedding Everyone's getting excited. Appar uh, apparently, the germ of 66 will not be at the wedding because it is a limited audience, invites only. So, most of Totland and Whole Cake Island ain't even going to be there at the wedding. Which is perfect to Big Mom's plan of what she was going to do. And it also will work perfect for us, as in less people there... To inhibit the plan from succeeding. Anyway, YouTube, I'd like to hear your thoughts. The discussion's open. Hit the comments. Make sure to like this video to help it get around. If you ain't subscribed to my channel yet, 
Make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell to get my content firsthand. And if you'd like to become a patron, head over to my Patreon page and pledge to the quest of a fanboy. Y'all have a great night.